Good evening, all. Tonight I'm doing a short video on the TID radio wireless programmer and sort of like a first look for me and uh, how to actually program well as you can see in front of me there's a, an old UV5R still works uh, I've had it about seven or eight years now I think and it's still going strong um, anyway I'm going to show you how to program that radio with this the TID radio wireless programmer okay Right. Uh, first of all, what you do is you need that plugs into the radio, and then you need your phone, which will connect Bluetooth to that device, and then you can program through there. So what you have to do first of all is you have to download this software called OD Master, and uh, I'll just go back to here. So it's called OD Master. Uh, <laughs> okay. Yeah, okay, that's a bit of a boober. Okay, so it's called OD Master. So if we go into the... Uh, I don't know how to do this for the iPhone. I'm not an iPhone person, I'm an Android dude. So you go to the Play Store and just type OD Master. And I click on it, you can see that it is OD Master, and that's the symbol. And you can see it's been made by Comlins. So that is the one that you need. OD Master by Comlins with a dark green um, painting type thing. Anyway, so let's just open it to get this, and you get to here. Now for today's video, I'm not going to be doing the... The login because it does give you uh, different options on how to do this. I'm just going to do the basic programming using the using your phone and this this software. So what you then do? So in this case, we would just click skip, and you get to here. Now the first thing you, you do is you need to connect to the Bluetooth device. So I will go to the radio and I will turn on the radio. And then I will plug this in. Just goes into the usual place. You push it firmly all the way in. The next thing you do is you push this button on the top, and you go. And that turns the device on. I will then go to pair the device with the app. If you click on this, and you should see. This device called, well, I mean, it's called Kit, I'm sure it's probably called everything else, and you've got the MAC address. And you accept that, and then you go back. And you can see now it says a TID radio kit, and then there's the MAC address again. Uh, it's given as a device number, and the next thing you do is you select the model you want to program. So in this case, it is my Baofeng. And it's UV5R. And the next thing you do is you push read it. And as you can see, the Bluetooth device is now, well, the light is now flashing, and the red indicator that it's reading the radio is flashing on the radio itself. So what we have to do is we just have to wait for this. So hopefully it shouldn't take too long. The software does seem pretty good um, if you want to do it on an on the fly sort of basis. Uh, say you're out and about, you don't have a computer, you don't have a cable, you want to do some changes to your radio, or whatever. You could carry this around in your pocket. It's chargeable, uh, USB chargeable, and you could just do the software changes there and then. Uh, then it guides you through all this. It's got the channel, skip, so I'm just going to channel information settings which is there then it talks about the the functions of the radio then you've got uh, writing to the radio 
uh, saving if you want to save it uh, save the settings you've got however you need to do the login function for that to work you've got the rxtx list again so you have to do that when you look that was sorry that will only be an option if you log in with an account and the repeater list same thing again it will only do that if you log in with an account which i will cover in the next video uh, so we just click ok and this time i'm going to say cancel oh okay now the device is disconnected now that's interesting oh no it's reconnected again let's let's just double check because it did flash up at me there to reconnect device okay let's see if it's connected here let's just write hmm okay it looks to have disconnected there for some reason okay let's try again so we click that okay read it again Sorry about the wait. I just want to see. I want to show you guys how long it uh, actually does for each individual little section, sort of thing. So I don't want to embellish speed or anything like that. I just want to show you how it actually does it and the time it takes to do things. Okay, so it's almost there. Let's hope it doesn't disconnect this time. Could be my phone now. So I've got it quite far away so let's put it closer right uh, okay so we're now back in again as you see the radio's just restarted okay so first of all let's look at the function side of things so in the functions here you've got the a and b frequency this is if you go into vfo mode so you can set all the defaults in here when you click into vfo this is on the a band so the top bit Next on, you've got the B band, exactly the same thing, except it's the bottom one. Okay, then you've got DTMFs, so you've got all the stored DTMFs in here. Um, timeout timers, just 60 seconds as usual. I've got Squash level 3, Box, I very rarely use that, so I have that turned off. Voice prompt in English. Uh, the usual things, uh, save, which I believe this is power save. So I've never really messed around with that, so I just leave it alone. There's the three different scan versions. You've got one for... Oh, you know how the scans work. So you've got one that it, it scans until it finds something, it listens to it for a little bit, then it continues on. The other one, it scans to it, finds something, listens to it until, it's that, until that transmission stops, then it moves on. And the other one listens to it and then stops at a transmission. And when that transmission stops, the phone remains on that channel. It doesn't move any further forward. Anyway, I'm sure you all know that anyway. Uh, PTTID, I never use it. Uh, PTTLT. Uh, keyboard lock. Nah, don't, I never use that. You can turn it on or off. Auto lock, on and off. Busy channel lockout. You can have on and off. The wonderful beep. Um, that's the that's the actually you know that's the beep when you're actually pressing the keys, and then you've got the the right led is purple, the receive led is orange, and the transmission LED is blue. But this is just for this radio as it has these options. Uh, what else is there? Uh, the power on, power on message. You can either have it as full, but in this case for this radio, full is it black? It lights up the entire LCD system. LCD screen, um, so all the dots become active just so you can see it's working, I suppose. But in this case, I have it set for message. So, so this is the first change I'm going to make. So what I'm going to say is uh, the first message will be H A M F A M, and then underneath, I'm just going to say welcome. Welcome. Right. Uh, this is where function where you can turn the FM radio on and off. If you, are, if you want to use it. Oh, there's the wonderful Roger button. That's what I was talking about. Seems to drive some people wild when you turn that on. Uh, transmit on A and B at the minute. Um, this is just the function of this radio again. 
It allows you to transmit on either both of them while you leave it off, or you can only transmit on A or B when you select A or B, and that's the only one that will transmit. Uh, then we have the channel display, the way it displays the information. So there's a channel plus the name, uh, or you can have just the channel, the channel plus the name, or the channel and the frequency. So as you can do for the two different the tops and the bottoms. As you can see this one, I have a channel and frequency. So at the bottom there, you can't really see it yet. Uh, but let's push a button. There you go. You can see the channel number on here and the frequency. And as I said on the top one, there's the channel number on the corner there, 15. But the actual channel name. Anyway, so I've made a bit of a change here. I've set the ham fat. So let's, um, let's write this. As you can see, it's now writing to the radio. Oops, I moved the camera. Okay, the writing doesn't seem to take as long as the reading. Let's move that back a bit. There we go. Okay, so it's now written it, and it's confirmed it. So I'll click, and you can see the radio's just powered on, and there it was. It's a very quick message. I don't know if you saw that, but uh, just in case you didn't, I'll turn it off. Turn it back on again, and there's the there's the message that we set up. Very very quick. It's it's gone very quickly. Uh, next bit, channel. This is where you program your channels. Now, you can list all your channels here. I think they've tried to make this the best way that possible they can. Obviously, it can't be like chirp where it shows you all the channels in one page. Maybe they can possibly think of a way to redesign this so it has all the channel number, a brief dis and a, maybe there's a channel name here, all the way down in a list. So you can scroll through it, then click on it, and then do your changes. Maybe it's just a suggestion. Maybe it's if they're watching this, they might consider doing that. Or maybe it's they have tried and it just it doesn't look right. Uh, so in this case, um, let's go to channel 15, which is the one you're currently looking at on the on the screen of the radio there. Let's go to channel 15. And you can see I have the RX frequency 146.9, transmission frequency 146.3. Uh, you have to manually enter those two in depending on the repeater you're connecting to. Then you've got the, um, the transmit uh, CTCSS, the receive CTCSS, sorry. The top, this one is the receive CTSS, this is a, the transmit CTSS. Then you've got the different power levels for the UV5R here. You've got high and low. You've got the narrow and wide band, PTTID again, busy lockout, channel. You can add this to the, the scan, so you can either have it turned on or off, and this will add it to the scan function of the radio. Signal code, still not sure what that is. Um, I keep telling myself to have a look into that and exactly what it is, but um, yeah, I never get around to it. So anyway, you've got the name here, V7RPT, which is my closest repeater to me, but uh, let's just say, so I can show you changing the title, let's just say uh, test. Okay, so I've changed the title of that, oops, that channel, let's just make sure we have, oh, what have I done here? <laughs> uh, cancel, there we go. Oh yes, we've got um, test. So now if I write this, so let's write. Oh, somebody broadcasting there. So let's send it to write. Okay, it's now writing the radio, uh, writing them settings to the radio. So let's have a look. Okay, written, and it's restarted, and as you can see, it is now displaying the radio name of, sorry, the channel name of test. So that worked. Uh, so let's put this back. B B seven RPT. Um, those of you that live in the Vancouver and the um. That sort of area, the lower mainland in, in um, BC, will be very familiar with this 
this repeater if you're uh, if you're a ham if you're licensed ham. If you're not, then obviously I'm not gonna sort of roast you for that. But um, if you are using this radio, you should really look at getting um, getting a license because it can get you into trouble if yes, I know it's if you get caught, blah 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 blah. But still, anyway. So everybody around here who has who uses a who uses, who uses ham radio and is a is a ham, then they will be very familiar with this repeater because it has a very large footprint over the lower mainland, uh, and it's up on the top of um, uh, Mount Seymour. Anyway, so I'm just going to write this back back so that my my radio is back to the way I want it. Okay, so how do I come out of here? I just push enter. Oh no. Okay, let's click on somewhere else. It's a bit weird. I'm to get rid of this. Hmm. Cancel. Yeah, that could be something about the programming the developers could maybe do. If for some reason it wouldn't let me get rid of the the uh, the keypad there on my phone until I went to high low and was given the cancel option. Anyway. Uh, let's write this back, and away it goes. Almost there. Okay, done, and it's going to reboot the radio, and it's back to V7 RPT. Right, and the last few things I need to show you is if you push the save button, it says please log in to use this function. If you use the repeater list, it says please log in to use this function. And if the TXRX list, please log in to use this function. Um, now that is to do with the... Well, you can actually program this remotely using a web page. Uh, but I haven't really got into that yet. Uh, well, I have, but... Um, I like to try and keep my videos as short as possible, just showing you the basics and how it works. Um, so that was the um, what have you got in here? You got the radio, yeah, yeah. So that was a a quick sort of how to on the TID Radio Wireless Programmer. Uh, this is the box it comes in. Uh, there we go. Yeah, TIO. And there is oh, not much in it. So you have the, the cable in here, and the the cable is a little programming. It's a USB programming uh, charging cable. And the little device went in there. Now the, the um, user manual is actually very well written. Um, very, very explanatory, very simple, very easy to understand. Um, so that is that's another good thing that these guys have done. Um, sometimes you get radios from um, around the China area, and the the documentation for them is not exactly great, and it's a lot of messing around to try and understand it. However, the guide that comes with this is very explanatory, and it's very simply laid out and easy to understand. Um, so that is it for tonight. Uh, so I hope you enjoy this. If you do, please subscribe and, and like these videos. It helps me move on to do some more. Um, and the next video in this series I will do um, will be using the using the account way to do things where you have to sign into account. And then I'll show you how to do the remote programming, as it's called, yeah, using a web page. So, for now, have a very good night and 7.3s, and I'll see you all soon. Good night.